I'm Mariana Morris, um, and I'm going to talk about techniques to get your team involved in doing user research, involved in user experience design, and the importance of getting the team involved. I organize a monthly event called UX Oxford in England, and as an organizer and as a speaker in events like this one, I end up talking to a lot of people. And one thing that I'm very interested in is how is their design process, um, how design is uh, integrated with development teams. Um, one thing that I find, um, I, I see a problem um, often, and it surprises me, is that there is a, still a lot of companies that don't have the concept of um, multidisciplinary teams. And, um, and with ideas um, from Agile and Lean Startup, we uh, learned better, better ways of doing uh, working. Um, so we end up having, pro having problems like developers feeling frustrated that the design they've been given is flawed or doesn't work or is technically impossible to implement. Or designers feeling that they, their designs were not well implemented. So what happens is there is a delivering process between teams. And this is an, uh, inefficient. So it ends up, ends up being uh, us and them, different teams in different parts of the company. Uh, the problem is that the, the, uh, the team, they don't know uh, their, the, the impact they are having in the outcome of the product. And sometimes they don't even know people they are working with. The more complex the projects are, and our projects and systems are becoming much more complex, the more we need different perspectives in solving a problem. Designing and developing in isolation is not an option anymore. We need to work together. As a, as a web industry with ideas like Agile and Lean Startup, we've learned and we are learning better ways of working in order to develop better digital products, better user experience, and better and more efficient processes. And it's an exciting way of working in multidisciplinary teams and cross-functional teams, uh, where there is true collaboration, where everyone contributes towards one goal, which is to create high-quality products. So that's how it works. Everyone working the, in the project are contributing, discussing, brainstorming on a regular basis. Developers and designers are sketching together. There are discussions around, around whiteboards, Developers are also coming to meet users, over observing usability testing. There is no concept of delivering between designers and developers, because we are all working together and we know the project well. I find this a really motivating way of working, and it, and it creates a really good relationship between the team. There are some challenges, of course, and I'll get to that later. So I'm going to talk about three things. Project teams, roles, and uh, the UX product cycle. Techniques to get the uh, team involved and collaborate in user research. And verbal communication and some online tools to communicate between UXers, de designers, and developers. This is based on my experience, and I'm, I'm sure everyone ha have their own experiences. That I would love to learn from you in a discussion later on. So first, before I get into that, I'm just going to talk a little bit about where I work, so you know the context that I'm in. Uh, I, I'm head of design at Oxford Computer Consultants, um, a software company based in Oxford, England. We design and develop software, web and mobile apps um, for, for clients, and we also have our own software products. Um, our Sectors are mostly engineering, science, health, and social care. And what motivates us is complex work, complex in terms of data uh, and proper design challenges. We work with agile and lean methodologies and also waterfall. Uh, the design team is relatively new in the company. 
uh, I joined them about two years ago. And we are building a design team and working out the best way to integrate design in the company. We have developers, software, software engineers, designers, product managers, account managers, support teams, and training teams. Our project, uh, product teams are quite small, usually it's a, a designer, some de developers, an account manager, a product manager, project manager. We sit in an open office quite near to each other, so at any point we uh, can stand up and go to someone's desk. We work in um, project teams, sit uh, in pods, and the design team works across uh, the company and across multiple development teams. The role of the designer has changed. We're not working in isolation anymore, behind our screen. But our role as a designer is to facilitate conversations between people in the team, to talk about users and the whole user experience. Most of the time nowadays, designers are standing at a whiteboard, at someone's desk, at a meeting, bringing clarity of user experience to the team and facilitating discussions. There is this tweet uh, by Caroline Jarrett that I really like. So, user researchers' fallacy is my job is to learn about users, whereas the truth is my job is to help my team learn about users. And that's the role of the designer today. We need to bring clarity and facilitate that conversation. Uh, the government in the UK are giving an excellent example uh, about good user experience. They created a, like a design principles, and what the first design principle is meet user needs, not government needs. So they're redesigning all the government services, online services. Um, and one of the things they say is that user research is, is team sport, is you know, getting the whole project team involved. Everyone is impacting on the user experience. User experience is something that the whole team should have a responsibility for. So the way I see is we have several team activities. Then the designer go, goes away because we need space to think. Go away, draw out some, some stuff and come back to, to the meeting. Um, I really like um, sketching with developers and sketching with the team. And it's not about I sketch my idea and you sketch your idea and let's compare. It's not about that. It's about sketching together. We're scribbling, uh, scribbling in each other's sketches, you know. Everyone is in the kickoff meeting, listening, uh, listening and discussing a project briefing, client's vision and, and the goal, and the business goal. And user research is across the whole process. One of, the, one of our design principles is that we meet users early and often. So user research is throughout the project. So I'm going to talk about some UX techniques to facilitate conversation and discovery. These are some of the techniques we, we use in almost every project the design team is involved in. We start by going where the users are. We meet them, talk to them in their natural environment. So this was a project for National Grid. Um, we were developing a tablet app for uh, engineers who has to calculate the gas flow that comes into the country. So we went to interview engineers who work at the power stations, at the, at the power station, and we spent a, a day there with them. So who went there? It was me as a, the designer in that project at, at the time, project manager, the account manager, and the developer. So this was a calculation app. The technology behind it was so important that it's impossible that me as a designer could get all the requirements and understand what the engineer was saying. It's really important that the technical person was there. And this was another... Um, project we were working on is actually one of our products for social care. We needed to find out uh, how our product dealt, uh, worked with uh, the screen reader JAWS. 
because uh, the major uh, user for this product, for this client, was um, visually impaired. So we went there, and it was uh, me uh, as the designer, and Paul, who is from support and training team. Now, uh, if the user will have a problem after you deliver the project, they are going to call the support team, and they are going to have a massive impact in that user experience. So Paul needed to be there to understand the user. So now, uh, because we are focused on embedding design in the company, we are streaming back to the office every user research we do. So we have this thing that we call a dose of user research. When the designers go um, to interview users or do usability testing, we book a meeting room in the office and send an email around and say, anyone can come and watch. And this depends on the project. Of course, some projects are confidential and just the team can watch. Uh, but whenever we can, that's what we do. And this is particularly important when it's for one of our products, because there are so many developers working on that product that they need to have more contacts, uh, contact with users. Sorry. And another thing, another technique that I found really useful is um, usually is the designer facilitating the conversation with the user. Everyone else, we have some rules like you need to be quiet, you know, some other things, take notes. Um, and we ask them to write questions in post-it notes and give to the designer. Sometimes it can be a bit hectic of facilitating and getting all those post-its, <coughs> but we try our best to, to get all the questions in. And we run remote usability testing as well. Uh, on this one, we had two rooms. Um, so the facilitator, the designer, and the user was in a room. In the other room, there, are, there is the team uh, observing. And we record um, every uh, usability testing interviews we do, put in a shared folder uh, Again, depending on the confidentiality of the project, but uh, we put in a shared folder that anyone in the company can access the recordings of, of um, that, that project. It's very useful when uh, people join the team and they need to you know, get, um, uh, understand the project. User flows are, and user journeys are a really good way to bring clarity to the team. Because as you are drawing the user flow and the user journey, you are basically making the scope of the project and saying, this is the goal for the user. Whatever this makes the user come to the website or the app, and that's what they want to achieve. So let's make sure that this is streamlined and as easy as possible uh, to achieve. And um, system, the system design is going to have a massive impact in that user flow. And the, the system design and the user journey needs to be aligned, otherwise it won't work. So we have, um, in Agile projects, we have um, like grooming sessions and planning sessions. And often there is the user flow, the uh, wireframes or designs there in front of them that um, we are going to create tasks based on those things. And um, the interesting thing is, um, I, this is one technique that I just came up with when I needed to get uh, the feed, uh, feedback from developers. Um, it's very easy when you are in a meeting with five people um, that that, is, that discussion is not very focused. And we really need to focus to get the feedback you need um, in, on your designs and your ideas. So this was a you know, question. Um, so I asked them to, I, I, I presented the user flow and asked them to write in post-it notes any questions, anything that is missing from that user flow and any ideas they've got. And then you end up having something like this. So one of the uh, calls to action was uh, 
I, I said that the user would print a checklist, but that was a tablet app. So how would they print in a, in a power station? They don't have the, the printer there. And that are the things that you identify flaw, flaws and problems in, in that flow much earlier. In my defense, that was also a web app. So that was what it related to. Um, so we get uh, post-its, um, which are, we use a lot of post-its because it's a, lot, uh, it's a very good way to get lots of ideas in a very short period of time. We use uh, also this uh, technique, uh, this template, that was done by uh, Roman Pichler, and I really recommend, uh, which is called the Product Canvas. Uh, it's a really good way uh, to integrate UX in development uh, process. So that's how it looks when you have a project there. You have on the, right, on the left hand side here, you have the personas their um, thinking and, and triggers, like what, like motivations should use the system. In the middle, we have the big picture, user flow, and, and some sketches. This was like in a, in a meeting in front of the whiteboard, how, how to solve this problem. And then on the right-hand side, you have the, the sprint goals um, and, and tasks. So every time we are discussing, every day in a daily stand-up, we're discussing in front of this board. We are always going back to, to the personas. And a persona is not an imaginary persona. We actually met you know, the, the person at the beginning of the project. So we can say, no, Richard, he wouldn't do that. He doesn't need this. So we do, you do a lot of sketching, as I said before, um, development and, and uh, designers working together. It's important that you know um, what to show, what you need to communicate in terms of your design, uh, because it can um, facilitate communication or not. So for example, a sketch is much more it's, it's so uh, unfinished that people are more likely to, to collaborate to that. Whereas if you do a prototype that looks really finished, there is a little bit of a barrier there. The sketches are clearly disposable and provoke questions and, and invite collaboration. Another thing as a designer that I learned uh, is that you need to feel comfortable sharing unfinished work. You need to ship it before we feel it's finished. This is a meme. Um, to get um, ideas from stakeholders, sometimes we are in a meeting with 10 stakeholders. We need to facilitate that really well to get everyone's opinion, everyone's ideas. So, um, Using post-its and you know grouping and dot voting are a really good way of getting everyone with the same level of voice. So there is no such a thing as the most senior is the one who takes the lead in the conversation, or uh, the louder, or if you think about introverts, extroverts, or whatever you think. It's like a you need to get everyone um, to be able to contribute. And project retrospectives, of course, is a great way um, of getting uh, that work and learning from it. So since I, we started working in multidisciplinary teams, designers, developers, managers, clients uh, working together, it became essential that we knew how to communicate with each other. And it's, it's a challenge. Uh, it's very comfortable to talk to people from the same discipline as you because we speak the same language. But there, there are challenges when it comes to talk to people that come from different backgrounds, different mindsets, or express themselves differently. So depending on 
the tone of, of, of your voice, it may include people or not. It may invite collaboration or not. So I like these uh, two terms, um, which is the facilitator and the leader mode that I'm calling. The facilitator is someone who is a guide for the group, is um, in, a, in a neutral position. The facilitator gets everyone to contribute to the discussion and to assume responsibility. The leader, on the other hand, is someone who leads the discussion and gives direction. As we come from different perspectives, we all talk in different ways. When you are running workshops, like internally or with the client, we need to know what language, what tone we, we should use in that discussion. So the facilitator language is more warm and neutral, is actively uh, listening, is passive, and it has a passive and inclusive uh, tone. So we might say something like, how about, maybe we can, what if? Uh, I see this working very well uh, in briefing meetings, for example. The client comes with their product, their idea, uh, and they, are, they just want to share that. They are so passionate about it that you really need to listen at the beginning. Um, and also in brainstorming sessions. The leader language is about showing competence. You're the expert. It's a direct and muscular language. So it's something like, this is my plan. This is absolutely right. And here's why. And I completely agree. And this is very important when you're presenting your designs, for example. The client needs to feel that uh, you know what you're talking about. So you need to use a much more strong language sometimes. But what I find is, is a mixture. In one meeting, you might have one or the other uh, tone. When you're asking for feedback on your designs, it's very important that you state clearly where, where you're at, uh, what kind of feedback you're looking for, so you get a better focused response. Ask clear questions and explain the rationale um, for, your, for your decisions. So usually when I'm presenting my designs, I'm the one who speaks first, as in, this is what I'm looking for here, this is the response I need from you. And when you're giving feedback on a, uh, to a designer, make sure you ask uh, the current status of the design. Is it at the beginning of the process? Is it at the end? What, what state is it? Question first and comment last. Probably the, the thing or, or the idea you've got in your mind, the designer has already thought about because they've been working on it for you know, hours, days weeks, months, so question, ask why that is in the same way, that way. And explain the technical challenges. The designer really needs to understand what are the challenges there, so they can come up with another creative uh, solution that will fit uh, to, the, to the technology. And don't refer to your personal taste. Refer uh, back to the briefing and use the research. Avoid, I don't like it. This is my pet hate as a designer, is when you show a design and someone's like, I don't like it. And my thinking is, I don't care. It's not about personal taste. It's about the breathing, it's about the purpose. And avoid, you can't do it without explaining why. Um, I'm not going to play this video just because of time, but um, I'm going around like one of my personal projects is about verbal communication and leadership for designers. And I am interviewing designing leaders or people who are respected in the industry uh, on certain topics. This one was about uh, giving and receiving uh, feedback with uh, Jerry Leonidas. So designers ask a lot of questions um, because we need to understand uh, the, the status quo. 
We need to understand the restrictions of a project and the technical restrictions. There is this joke, I don't know if you know this one. How many design, designers does it take to change a light bulb? Does it have to be a light bulb? <laughs> and that's what we do. We, we test, um, the, we challenge the status quo in every aspect. There are really interesting article about give it five minutes. So before you give feedback uh, on someone's design or to someone, think before you, and, and don't react. So design has the power to create emotions in people. And it's very easy, um, even for designers, to give, uh, it's very hard to give feedback sometimes because you are full of that emotion, you know, as in, I don't like it. But have a think uh, of 10 seconds helps and then give your feedback and then question why it's that way. And there's another article that is really interesting, um, which is about negotiating. If someone loses, you did it wrong. And that's how I see when it has true collaboration between people. We are negotiating there. There are some communication tools, and I'm sure everyone is um, using different tools. Um, but the tools that you choose are very important to, to keep that collaboration. So things like GitHub comments, uh, where involve the designers uh, in that uh, circle as well, and account managers and project managers, or task management tools um, that you can, you know, comment uh, to a designer. They can uh, upload the designs, and you can have that communication with you uh, between people. And then you end up having something like, you know, a developer attaching an image saying, this, you know, I implemented your design, but this doesn't look right. And then you upload again a mock-up saying, no, okay, let's do this way then. And um, as uh, Kathleen was talking about remote work, this is uh, a tool that I find interesting, which is uh, the videos and people are always there. So it's almost like the tap of the sh uh, on the shoulder. Uh, you just click on an image, and that becomes a video of the person. So this is my uh, experience about collaborating and getting UX integrated with development. But let's not settle. We work with technology, and that's always changing, and this process will change. So let's keep meeting up, discussing, improving regularly. Thank you.